Hey guys, I'm just leaving Dick's Sporting Goods with a new purchase. Something that a lot of you have been asking me about or saying that you've tried and really like. It's the Tommy Armor 845s. Now these are not your granddaddy's 845s. In fact, my own father played the 845 Silver Scotties. This is a new version. It's now owned by the folks that own Dick's Sporting Goods and Golf Galaxy, so it's sort of the house brand now. They were $65 a club, so that's pretty darn good value. I got the five through attack wedge here. Let's see if these things are any good. Let's do it now. All right, so just to give you an idea of the thickness of these clubs, the top end is fairly thick there. They did a good job of hiding the cavity back. That's the big cavity back back there, but you really don't see it at a dress. This is the five iron in my hand. This is where I would likely see the back of the cavity back, but with this club, I don't. That's really nice, but there you go. That's a dress. That's the thickness. Definitely instills some confidence looking down. You got a big, nice face there. You got a healthy top end. That's gonna be a forgiving club. Here's the nine iron. Many people don't like to have a super thick top end on their nine iron. That's why combo sets exist. But yep, you're gonna get a pretty big top end here. Again, obviously you're not gonna see the cavity because it's even more lofted, but uh, that's what you're gonna be looking at with the nine iron. So I took the Tommy Armor 845s out on course. They were definitely the best sounding game improvement irons. It was like a rifle shot. And they may be the best irons bar none that I've ever tried in terms of sound. So that was really nice. Now, in terms of ball flight, very easy to get this thing up in the air, including on miss hits. Here you can see I hit this ball a little thin. It still got up in the air and it still traveled all the way to the green. I'll tell you what, I hit that one kind of thin. We just made the green, but I hit that thin, but it was very forgiving. And that's what you want out of a club like this. If you're not gonna have perfect contact, you need a game improvement iron, guys. Now, the one drawback I saw immediately out on course was that my distances were down. Now, they're definitely a little more lofted than my gamers, which are pretty pressed forward. But I'm back here in my simulator and I'm gonna take the nine iron, I'm gonna take the seven iron, and I'm gonna take the five iron, which is the strongest lofted club in this set. They didn't have a four iron. We'll see what these distances and spin numbers look like. I'm going to bet the spin numbers are up a little bit, but let's find out for sure. All right, guys, I'm gonna start off with a nine iron here. Now, my normal nine iron carries, I would say 135 and probably rolls out to like 140 when I really get a hold of it. If I take kind of my normal swing, which is a little easier, but more consistent type of swing, then generally, generally I'm gonna hit that thing about 130 carry. So let's see how these things do. Now that one, not the perfect strike. So that first one carried only 115. It rolled to 123, but I didn't quite strike that one so great. Let's give it another shot here. Good strike there. That felt really nice. So in addition to the great sound of these clubs, they feel really nice as well. The construction of these must be high end. And uh, in terms of getting the ball up in the air, they go up in the air really easily. That one, pretty decent, carried 125, total distance 130. I'd like to get to about a 130 carry though with the nine iron. Let's see if we can swing it a little harder now. Another pretty good strike there, heading a little left of the green. And that should be about 130. So carried 129, total distance 134. So that's pretty good. It's only about five yards down in distance and it's definitely a degree or so more in terms of loft. So if we can get those kinds of results, not too bad. Another pretty good strike there. Didn't quite get the peak height, but it looks like we got the distance we wanted. I've got that flag set out there at 130 and pretty, pretty close to knocking the stick down there. The spin's at 62.75, which is also a little more spinny than my clubs. And again, that's not necessarily a good or bad thing. Some people want a little bit more spin. That's definitely gonna hold the green a little bit better than my clubs would. And that's a good thing on fast and firm conditions. I'm gonna hit one more here, then we'll look at the total stats. 
probably my best shot. And whoa, <laughs> yeah, that almost went in the hole. That almost went in the hole. I've never had a hole in one in real life. I've also never had it in a simulator, but we almost had a dunk right there. Okay, carried 127, total distance 131. So pretty good and pretty expected for what I would think this nine iron can do. So if we go ahead and remove that first shot, which was a little thin, here are four really good shots here. Uh, my average spin at 6,012, that's really good. I had one shot that was again a little bit thinner there, but 6,012. My launch angle, nice at 25.9, nice and high there. That one I really hit well, 26.9. I got it up in the air nicely. That one also had the fastest ball speed at 96.1, of course. And offline, I was missing a little left with these clubs, but uh, I would take most of those shots because it was only 2.4 on average. Only 0.2 on that last shot. We're talking about whew, less than five inches about, five inches. Peak height, real nice at 29, that's what we like to see. My carry at 127, and the total yards there at 132. So like I said, about five yards overall, a little shorter than my gamers, but we're gonna get a little bit more spin and we're probably gonna get a little bit more peak height out of this one, guys. All right, so I deleted those shots out. Now we're gonna move over to the seven iron. And again, with my gamers, I hit a seven iron about 160 total. So carry 155 to 157 would be pretty normal. With this club, I'm gonna hope for about 150. And in fact, I'm gonna set the flag a little further away. Let's set the flag there at 150. Again, our first shot, <laughs> not a great one, but it shows you just how forgiving these clubs are. And that's the nice thing. I saw this out on course. In fact, I hit one or two really thin shots out on course and they still got up in the air nicely. I missed that right, but it went 157 yards on a thin, nasty swing. We can definitely do better than that. Similar swing, thin and nasty there. <laughs> and again, we're still getting the distance. The spin's gonna be way down on those ones though. There we go, there's a good strike. That one is gonna at least get to the green, if not over the green, and I'm happy with it going over the green because like I said, 160's where I'd love to be, so anywhere close to that is a good thing. That's 164 there, guys. 164, so plenty of distance for you. Carried 159, that's, yeah. That's what we're looking to see right there. Another pretty good shot there. Not quite as high up on the club face, but again, whoo, I had to look at this thing because <laughs> I thought I might be hitting a six iron, but no, it is the seven iron. And again, that was a great shot. Let's do that again. Little fat on that one. And yeah, it's going a little bit left. But I am a mere mortal, guys. That's what happens when you get golf reviews from a mere mortal. You're gonna get a couple of errant shots. That was one there, long and left. But again, carried 157. Gotta be liking that. Maybe we should just go ahead and set the flag out there to 160. Why not, right? So far, these clubs are surprising me in terms of distance. So now the flag's out there at 160. Let's see if we can get there. Looking pretty good. Pulled it a little left. Caught a piece of the green. And we're on the back fringe. That's great. That is absolutely great when you're talking about distance there. Very happy to see that. Pretty good strike there. It started off right on the simulator, but I gotta say, I got a lot of club on that ball. 
And again, 167. So guys, in terms of distances, really happy with what we're seeing. Let's take a look at these stats now. Okay, so if we go to the table here, we're gonna knock out a couple of shots there. Those first couple of shots were pretty nasty. Yes, never wanna see them again. And here we go with all pretty good shots. One was pushed, a couple were pulled, but in general, very, very good contact on the ball. Our ball speed coming off the club, just under 110 miles per hour. Launch angle 19.6, which is about right for a seven iron for me. The total spin, 4,400. Now there was one big anomaly here, 3,600, which brings our total down. Other than that, we probably would be about 4,500 in terms of average there. If we look at carry, I'm really happy with 159 carry and 167 total in terms of rollout. The rollout's a little bit more than I would guess, but again, these simulators all, all kind of overestimate. But hey, if I can hit a seven iron, 167, carrying at 159, I'm really, really happy, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the five iron now. I'm gonna go ahead and set the flag at 180 for us because 185, pretty good number for my normal club. And if we get anywhere near 180, I'll be very happy with this five iron. I noticed that I struggle a little bit with the five and four iron especially. And what's been helping me lately is just choking up on the club, maybe a quarter of an inch, not much, but just a little bit. Let's see if that works today. All right, I definitely pushed that one. Definitely pushed that one, but I felt like it was a decent strike. We're rolling out there to what looks like 172, but definitely a push, kind of like the other, other first shots with these clubs. Again, pretty good, but pushed that one out, and we didn't get the draw there. But maybe a slightly better strike, at least it felt better, yeah. Okay, now we're out there to 180, that's exactly pin high, and I just pushed it. <laughs> but again, with these clubs, the feel, the sound, the trajectory, the look of these things flying, both here in the simulator, as well as what I saw out on the range and out on the course, very nice. Pretty good strike there. Came up just a little bit short, rolled on. We went to 178 there. And in terms of my strike, I would say it was just a hair thin, like one groove too thin. <laughs> so carried 162. I think we can get these things to carry 170. I'm gonna see if I can do that here. Again, just a little thin and pushing this club a little bit. That one, I <laughs> really overdid it in terms of trying to pull the ball and get some draw on it and I overcooked it. So that one's gonna go longer. When you, when you pull a ball like that, the ball speed's higher, the spin is much lower, and you can see that one went out to 191. So I'm still yet to really hit a solid five iron here, but I just wanna hit one good one before we take a look at the numbers. Better, still pulled it a little bit. But we hit the green, we rolled out to 184, and that is pretty darn nice. Can we repeat that? I just wanna hit, I just wanna feel a couple of good swings here today, guys. Take one more shot. Catch a piece, will it catch a piece? Yes, okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, again, in terms of distance, I am really pleasantly surprised because again, nice trajectory out of these irons, definitely stronger lofted than the clubs of old. However, they're not super lofted either. So let's take one last look at these numbers here. All right, so a variety of swings there, some great, some not so great. There's gonna be a couple of anomalies, like you see this one here with 3,500 spin, but in general, 4,200 RPM. That's about what our seven iron was actually. So 
Good numbers for spin there, even though I wasn't making pure, pure contact. I would say these last two were probably the best in terms of getting club on the ball, though these were pretty good too. I pushed those ones off to the right a little bit. I remember those shots, but got a lot of club on them. So when you get a lot of spin on them and you strike them like you should, again, 45 to 4,600, maybe 4,700 RPMs for me and my swing speed. Launch angle, again, really nice for a five iron to go 18.7. That's pretty, pretty good for me. I like that. The peak height, the average of 29 was just like our seven iron. So again, <laughs> Can't complain at all. On average, carry 167, rolling out to 181. I'd like to see those carry numbers up just a tad maybe. And uh, that low spin got us about 14 extra yards in real life. Um, you don't wanna be rolling off the back of the green if you can avoid it. But in terms of total distance, pretty happy with that one. Just would like to see a little bit more carry, maybe slightly more spin to hold just a little bit more. But 181, pretty happy with that. Like I said, 185 is about stock for me. So 181, just a few yards underneath that. And that's what we've seen with all of these clubs. So guys, all in all, what do I have to say about these clubs? I really, like I said, love the sound, the feel. In terms of looks, a little chunkier than what I like, but again, confidence instilling for you higher handicaps out there. If you're looking at your first brand new set, I think you gotta take a look at these irons. For $64 a club, extremely good value. Not the longest clubs out there, but definitely not the shortest either. I would give it about an eight out of 10 if I was ranking these clubs in terms of distance. But like I said, in terms of feel, in terms of value, those are tens out of tens, no doubt about it. Inevitably, people are going to ask me to compare this against the Costco Callaway Edge set. I did those videos and I will link you right here so you can check that out. And people will ask me about the Cobra set, the stick set and some of these other package sets or low budget alternative clubs that we've looked at on this channel. I would say these are right up there. These are not quite as long as the sticks, but I would say they're just as easy and forgiving to hit. And these are really readily available because you've got Dick's and Golf Galaxy stocking these all over the country. If you're in the United States, if you're outside, if you're abroad in the UK, you might have a little bit harder time finding these, but I think they're still findable. These things are pretty plentiful, especially in the secondary market. So guys, I will leave a link down in the description in case you are interested in looking further into these clubs and possibly purchasing them. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna link a couple of videos here, that Costco Edge set, as well as that stick set that I really liked this year. I think that's probably the winner of all the budget clubs that I've played with this year, but these ones are right up there, guys. They're sitting right under your nose. Walk into a Dick's, check them out, and see if they're for you. Guys, hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll catch you back here very soon on another edition of Let's Play Through.